Hey folks, it's Bear Gardner, and it's time to talk about Blood and Iron, also known as the next expansion for Cards, the World War II card game. I am, as ever, a Cards content creator, member of the Cards Contributor Program. You can find all my links down below. Um, come join me on Twitch, follow me here, like, subscribe, you know the drill by now. And if you can manage, please do think about Ko-Fi um, or coffee, depending on the way you want to pronounce it. Ultimately, it just gives you a you-focused way of deciding if you like the content, being able to support me, being able to make more of it. However, the focus of this video is going to be on the announcement article that we had today, today being Monday the 28th of October. Uh, we just got an announcement article uh, for the new expansion, and we're going to talk about it. I do this pretty much all the time when we get new content, which is I will sit down and talk about it, read through the article, and give you my thoughts. So, it's pretty cool. Uh, there is a video to watch as well, so you can go watch that as well. The link is down below, so you can go watch the video and see uh, the, the actual new community manager. Uh, and um, cards itself, kind of them, themselves, talking about their views on the expansion, which is kind of interesting. It's only about three minutes long, so it's pretty cool. So, without further ado, uh, let's hop across and look at what the article's got to tell us. Okay, so here we are. Confirmation that the new expansion will land on the 28th of November, and we've got a uh, cool picture of a tank, which is definitely relevant. Uh, I love the text, by the way, the, the font and format. It all looks very pretty. I'm liking the new look. Uh, so we are going to get uh, the highly anticipated winter expansion. And obviously we've got 87 new cards. Uh, the groundbreaking shock mechanic, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, put, and the idea is that the expansion puts battlefield combat in the spotlight. So the general idea here seems to be to bring the focus back onto unit-based combat, maybe away from the orders that we've seen of late. Which, it, honestly, for a lot of people will be a big positive thing. We're going to see tanks and armoured warfare as a focus. There's some confirmation of that in the video, which is also interesting. So that's always cool, uh, and we're always good to see new content coming out. So let's have a look at the expansion highlights. So we have 87 new cards, as I say, so uh, 15 cards for the major nations, 3 each for the minor nations, and you can expect a similar rotation. We always get that. So cards will also be leaving as new cards come in, uh, but that'll all be announced in the future. The shock keyword, and our first comment on the shock keyword is that units with the shock keyword can attack without receiving uh, return damage on their first strike. Talk about it properly in a bit when we discuss the, the impact of it. Balance change in reserve pool, as usual, we'll see reserve cards uh, reworked and brought back in, we'll see some cards shunted back out again, and some balance changes, as always I will cover those when they come out and talk about my opinions on them. Uh, I'm not going to talk about in this video, or indeed in any video in all likelihood, the uh, current round of spoilers that are out on the various Discord forums. Technically speaking, if you look in your client at the moment, a number of cards are showing that they're rotating. Uh, obviously this is the don't craft this card warning and you should pay attention to it because you don't want to craft a card that's leaving the game. However, I have been informed reliably that the list has not been fully finalised yet, so when we get the finalised list I will of course talk about the cards that are being rotated out and how we all feel about them. From what we've seen, there are going to be some big changes. New battlefields. Each major nation is receiving a new battlefield with new visuals, which is extremely cool considering it's also going to be part of the Blood and Iron themes. I expect that these are going to be pay content like all the other battlefields. So you'll buy an HQ with a battlefield from the shop and we'll see what they look like, but I think they'll be pretty funky. Uh, and then, of course, there'll be the usual round of enhancements and bug fixes uh, and ongoing adjustments to Blitz tournaments, which I've made a video about and you can find on this channel somewhere and all of that stuff. So that's the overview. New stuff coming. Right. Time for the exciting bit, let's talk about the new keyword in detail. So the new keyword from this expansion is shock. Shock is a keyword mechanic that means that 
your unit gains a one time, that is to say it's a one shot deal, your unit either has shock or it doesn't, when it uses shock it goes away. Um, that means the first time it attacks in a battle, Again, in a battle, this is, I think, important to be aware of for the notive cards as they come from down below. The first time that it attacks in a battle, the target does not get retaliation damage. So it doesn't, doesn't matter um, what, what the target is, it doesn't get to retaliate. Now that could be huge, obviously, if you can get a strong enough unit with a good attack value, then this, this can be an incredibly potent trading mechanic, because it means that the first time this unit trades, it effectively trades for free. Uh, it gets to remove an enemy that has a defense equal to or less than its attack value. Just for free. Um, takes no retaliation damage. Now note, obviously it only applies when it attacks, so you have to get it into position and be able to get the, the actual effect to go off. And of course it only fires once, but it could be a potent tool and I think is a really interesting design choice. I like the idea, I like the idea of that high impact single damage swing. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how well you can use it. Um, it could be very, very punishing. But I'm, I'm excited, uh, and I think it'll be really cool to see how it goes. Um, it's going to obviously depend on the units that get it. We'll have a look and, and see what they end up being. But overall, I think shot looks like a really interesting keyword. Next up, we have nation-specific features. Now, this is interesting, because this is having a conversation about what we can expect to be coming for the nation's as they arrive. So Britain gains strategic bonuses by punishing enemies for making no or wrong attacks with an additional minor theme around pinning. All right, so the, the last sentence we'll get to, part of the sentence we'll get to in a minute because that's going to set some people off, understandably so. Pinning is a divisive mechanic. Um, strategic bonuses by punishing enemies for making no or wrong attacks. I'm really interested to see how this is going to work. Um, how you're going to put if you're punished for not attacking that could be an incredibly potent tempo tool depending on how that works so we'll wait and see how that comes out minor theme around pinning Britain's always had some good pin cards naval power in the past Monty shelling um, these are cards that pin um, adding some more pin is probably not a massive surprise and is honestly in Britain not shocking because Britain doesn't have a lot of blitz so it needs another way of restraining and restricting the opposition. Whether that is something you welcome or not is going to depend on your personal play style but I don't think I think the likelihood is from what we have seen of the potential rotations that pinning will not be as exploitable as it previously was, unless there's a bunch of new cards. But anyway, that's that's a matter for rotation, but pinning as a minor theme kind of makes sense, especially with Britain last patch slash update getting a uh, guard that gives guards blitz. Uh, Germany, high attack units dominate with good fight cards, also benefits for damaging the enemy HQ. So fight cards. Let's be clear, this this fight, fight is, it made its debut in Claim the Skies, and it is a mechanic whereby, in effect, your unit, whether through an order or a deployment effect or something else, fights out of sequence without activation another enemy unit, whether that's a random unit or a targeted unit and other things. Claim the Skies is the targeted version where your highest um, attack aircraft attack fights the, the unit that you target with it. Looks like Germany's going to get some more of this kind of uh, idea. Obviously Claim the Skies with Soviet. Looks like Germany's going to see some good fight cards. I'll be interested to see how that goes. Uh, benefits for damaging the enemy HQ. I mean, we've seen leans towards this in the past with things like um, the Soviet road to Berlin um, but it'll be interesting to see what benefits those are and whether we get snowbally but we've got card spoilers coming so we can have a look and see whether they tell us anything 
Soviet Union, so shock units take centre stage alongside the iconic T-34 tanks and fight mechanics for decisive engagements. So we're going to see Soviets go further into the fight mechanics, so I would expect to see some more things like Claim the Skies and units that do that, which is kind of makes sense. T-34s, very iconic tank, both for a lot of people in the game because every now and then you keep looking at it and thinking oh there's got to be some good t-34 synergies but also very iconic in the actual historical context of the war um the t-34 was an t-34 tanks were an incredibly well used resource um so that's going to be interesting uh, and it looks like i mean again we are seeing that the soviets are going to focus on this new shock mechanic now that's interesting for a nation which has kind of been lagging behind for a while now to kind of get center uh with the new mechanic especially a new mechanic that could potentially be very strong so that'll be fascinating to see how that one goes uh for the usa we have the famous sherman tanks playing a key role so we're going to see yet more um sherman tanks coming into play and then we have the support by a powerful three operation cost theme that enables efficient and precise tactical strikes so three ops not new uh we've had three op cost decks come and go every now and then though there have been various cards that do benefit from the three op costing or buff based on it it looks like we're going to see some more um and that would be interesting because that's gonna slow things down um the three op cost deck has always been kind of dependent on getting ramp um to get your units out because it's quite slow but has lots of big bodies when it gets there which might be a new tilt for the US in their way of dealing with efficient trading obviously in the past the US has quite often been known for efficient trading particularly as a nation to pick and draft but also just for frontline decks in general in the game my old spoiler warning rotations at the minute look like that's going to get less amazing than it has been uh losing some tools japan uh so we have small shock units provide tactical opportunities while big units boast strong stats but come with downsides that be can benefit the enemy i'm not quite sure what the second half of this is going to look like we're going to have to wait and see what the spoiler cards look like uh small shock units that slightly worries me in an already very aggressive nation i'm not sure that it needs the buff but we'll see it, it depends on how small they're gonna be um we'll have to kind of see where we go with it but japan has always been hyper aggressive uh japan getting bigger units that then presumably are going to be cheaper but with drawbacks is going to be interesting um so we'll see where we go with that i think uh, it's nice that we're seeing some commentary on the direction and choices that we're going to see um i i'm fascinated and in a minute we're going to get to go and see some cards and talk about those too so uh, i think it's good actually seeing some discussion about what the the direction of travel intended for the nations is so let's hop on down and go look at what's next what's next as it transpires is the beginning of spoiler season so we're actually going to get to look at some cards so we're going to start by looking at 10 cards uh, there is a disclaimer here that there might be minor changes before release which we have seen before one roof we're looking at you um but this is going to give us a chance to actually see what's going on and i will try and keep up with these as more and more of them come out and we'll see what format they come out in but for the minute we have 10 cards in this article so the first one so you can see is going to be the panzer 4h now the panzer 4h here we go here's a here's a here's a big tank with the fight mechanic so this is what we talked about when germany was being discussed as a design theory this is this big body it is a limited card um at five five it's a good body um but it has a deployment effect that is fight target enemy unit and it becomes veteran if the enemy unit is destroyed at veteran it gives your ground units with four or more attack blitz this is really interesting as an idea 
I don't know how massively used this is going to be. It certainly has potential in combination with things like Reichsbank and maybe US support in ramp so as to get more credits to get this out early, this could play into Blitz Doctrine in an incredibly potent way. Uh, because what obviously while it's on the board, your ground units with four or more attack, which will be a lot of your buffed tanks, will have Blitz. Um, I, it's, I like the design. Uh, again, the art, of course, unsurprisingly, really good. And the 4H, an iconic, massive driving tank. Um, overall, it's an interesting idea. Um, I think it might be one of those cards that you very much have to build around, which is why it's kind of probably good that it's a limited if that's something you want to do, because you're going to want to see it, but you're also going to want to be able to get it out late game giving all of your ground units with four or more attack blitz might be substantially less amazing however being able to get a swing without paying the immense two operation cost on this thing doesn't hurt uh, it, it's certainly a presence because it, it has an impact as soon as it hits the board and of course when it veterans which the whole point will be that you'll deploy it, it'll destroy something and it will veteran, it heals itself. So, I, overall, this is very strong. Um, especially considering that, again, the, note fight, fight target enemy unit. doesn't say target enemy unit in an adjacent line. So, if you drop this, you could use it to immediately engage via its long guns, presumably thematically, your enemy support, support line units. So this thing could delete any of the zero fours um, that are quite common, the smokescreen ones, because you can target them uh, with its uh, deployment effect. Uh, I'll take out anything in the support line, big bombers. Uh, no, bombers do get retaliation in the, um, in the fight mechanic, so that is something that has always been noted as being intended so far, is that bombers still get to fight back. But I'm interested to see how this goes, and it certainly fits the theme of what they talked about with Germany going forward, and it is definitely a big tank. Next up, we have a British tank. This is not a big tank. This is the Humber Mark IV. Um, firstly, I, I personally have a soft spot for the concept of, of the Humber. I saw one when I was younger, and they're kind of cool little vehicles, and they're very funky. Um, this, is, this is a cheap Brit tank, but is the first card we see with the shock mechanic. So, this has fury and shock. So, the first time it attacks it won't take retaliation damage. Now, of course, the downside here is quite apparent, actually. Several of the downsides are very apparent. Firstly, it doesn't have blitz. Secondly, it has an op cost. So it's quite slow. So you're going to want to get buffs on it for it to actually be good. That said, if you can get buffs on it, this thing could be very, very annoying. Um with that, that first strike from shock, um, if you can get a good attack buff on it, could be really irritating. Um, overall, it is a, it is, it's a very fragile body, but it's nice for the Brits to get a small tank to play with. Um, seeing some more of the, the light tanks and support from the, the Brit side is, it makes me happy from a, a theming point of view. Um, and I think it's interesting that this is the first card we see in the article that has the shock mechanic. Not a lot to say about it really until we see it more in play. Obviously it's a standard, so you can run four of these. So you could build a deck around these being a thing. Overall, my biggest concern with this is the slowness. Okay, so this is Breakout. This is another British card, and this is a British order. It's a really interesting order to me. So, Breakout is a cheap order with a potent effect, because it gives a unit fury and shock. Now, without some form of restriction, at one credit, this would be insane. But this comes with a really specific and also really fascinating restriction. This can only target a veteran unit. 
And it's interesting because veteran is something that's been around in the game. We, we know the mechanic is there, and there are units that do veteran. There is the Pathfinders from the US, Seven Schutzen from Germany. We'll talk about Seven Schutzen in a minute very specifically. But we have not seen an awful lot of veteran as a major focus. This on certain units could become incredibly strong. This on Seven Schutzen, for example, after it is veteraned, is very potent. Fury and Shock on a 5-5 five, five body, that's, that's a 5 damage swing that doesn't care about your opponent's defense and will rip through a lot of guards because the guard probably won't kill it on the second swing which means that it's effectively 10 damage so this is definitely going to be an interesting call as to an order to use um i quite like it i think it's interesting um i think it will depend on whether we get some more veteran support and what are the veteran units we see particularly for brits Back to Germany, and we get another order, and this is Glide Bombing. Now, Glide Bombing is an interesting idea. So this is, it falls into the category of conditional draw. So, or in this case, conditional cantripping. I'll talk about that in a second. The deal with glide bombing is that uh, you give the unit that's targeted gets its attack reduced to zero until your next turn. If it's destroyed on the turn when you target it, you draw a card. So, in theory, if you play this order and then remove the unit, which is kind of going to be the point of it, you can trip this card. It replaces itself, cycles your deck. It's not full draw because it's it's not you don't get extra cards. You turn a card into an effect and replace it. But it's interesting as an idea, and it's it's up there with it fits along the the same theme as suppression, which is a card we've seen, which um, was uh, literally suppress a unit and then draw a card if you control an air unit. Again, it's the same thing. It cantrips if you manage to fulfill a criteria. This criteria might be a little harder to fill, and at the cost, this may not be the most popular order in the world, but we'll have to see, because it's going to depend a lot on what it can target and whether there are any really important targets for it to get. I also have to take a minute to point out that this is a truly, truly epic piece of artwork. Right, so now we get a Soviet card, uh, and this is the 57th Rifles. Uh, it's uh, uh, a special card, so you can run two of them. Uh, this is interesting, because this card is a decent body infantry, 4-5, uh, 4-4. Four, four, four. It's not amazing, but it's okay. When you, But this the, the text is really interesting. This is one of the T-34 support cards. So this card, while it's on the board, when you deploy a T-30, or add, note, or add, this is important for things like um, various uh, orders that create T-34s. When you deploy around a T-34 tank, it fights a random enemy unit. Now, first of all, there's always the downside to this, which is the RNG. Depending on what's on the board, this could be problematic because it might just literally suicide your T-34 and not get you a benefit. So this is going to be quite finicky to play with. The effect, however, in theory is quite potent because deploying your tank and then getting it to get a free attack could be really good. Um, I don't know, I really don't, until we see what more T-34 support is out there and how it shakes out as to whether this is actually going to be good or whether this is just going to be a nice idea in theory that never sees play. My instinct right now is that the second of these two things is going to be true. I think it's going to be tried out for a while, but I think at, at its cost, I'm not sure whether it's it's going to be amazing. And also, ultimately, it is the kind of thing that if, it, if you do find a way to build around it, your opponent's going to go out of their way to remove it. But it's an interesting idea and does show the T-34 support, which we heard talked about. We have another Soviet card, this time we have a Soviet order, this is Turning Point. Now, this, this 
could become a very deck defining card if T34 support becomes an actual thing. So turning point means that once you when you play this for the rest of the turn, any excess damage from your T34s is dealt directly to the enemy HQ. This can be very strong. If you can find a way to buff the life out of your T-34s and do a lot of overkill damage, effectively giving overrun to your T-34s, which is a very cool idea, this could be very, very potent. And at two credits, it's not immensely expensive. Um, so again, if there is going to be a T-34 deck, this is going to be a big part of it because this is going to be your big swing turn. Um, where you drop this onto a bunch of buffed T-34s that just swing and swing and swing and remove some enemy units, but much more importantly, obliterate your enemy's HQ. Of course, that means that you'd have to be in a position whereby your T-34s have a point to turn against, which is to say that the enemy has a large enough board that the T-34s can deal over damage, and that's where cards like this become finicky. Because if you're in that position, then the likelihood is that your opponent has the front line, which limits the number of T-34s you can swing with. Again, whether this card becomes absolutely pivotable and very, very strong, or just a meme that never quite works, will depend massively on the support that we get for T-34s. But I do like the idea, like the design behind this, I really enjoy as a, a thought, and I think it's, it's it, it fits the theme of the way that T-34s and Soviet engagements tended to go. I, I like the idea behind it, um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what it does. But it's hyper-specific, and generally speaking, any card that I see that is this hyper-specific uh, is suggestive of tribal decks by which, for those who weren't Magic the Gathering players, I mean decks which are built around a specific type of unit. In this case, T-34s. If there aren't enough T-34s out there that are good, this card is Bicycle Spokes. If there isn't a decent way of buffing your T-34s, this card is Bicycle Spokes. If your opponent doesn't have enough of a board presence, but with units that have a low enough defense that you can get overkill damage, this card is, you see where I'm going. This card may well end up being the definition of great idea, but juice and squeeze. It has the feeling of being just too situational. But again, who knows, maybe there's a way you can play into this, maybe there's a card coming that's going to reduce all of your opponent's defenses to one for the Soviets for a turn, at which point this would be insane. But we'll wait and see. Pontoon Bridge. I'm very excited to see Pontoon Bridge being represented in the game, and yes, I am that much of an engineer nerd, um, uh, that I think it's very cool that we're actually seeing a representation of this and the value of engineering and warfare. In this case, we're seeing it as a US um, order. Pontoon Bridge gives a friendly unit plus one plus two, um, and if it had four or more attack, note if it had, not has, four or more attack, set its operation cost to zero as well. This could be very good, and again, I think this will very much go into the three op cost um, direction that we've heard talking about, because a big part of that is going to be able to use things like in the past, any three op cost deck has wanted to use things like bolster um, or um, land of the fray to reduce the operation cost of units, because obviously three operation cost is ridiculously expensive. So th this could be very, very strong um, on, on a, for example, blitzing 6-6 six, six body that then becomes a 7-8 body with an op cost of zero. I, this, this, this could be a pivotal card as a buff for that particular concept. Um, plus, frankly, again, I'm going to go with it, but the art is incredibly cool on this. This particular piece of art I actually think has a really interesting perspective and stylization. But anyway, my point being, this card, I think, definitely points heavily in the direction and feels more usable than perhaps some other ones might be. Um, I quite like the look of this. I think it could be quite good. 
So, speaking of 6-6 bodies with bullets, welcome to the second Michigan. So, this is a big 3-op cost card. Massive 6-6 infantry body, has the 3-op cost, obviously, uh, and has a really interesting, if very... I'm not quite sure how I want to, to see it, um, piece of text here. So, what this says is gain 2 credits when you operate a unit with 3 or more operation cost. So this needs passing to understand how this is good, because on the first read you might look at this and think this is not great. In effect, this card, as long as you can pay the advance, reduces the operation cost of all of your 3-op cost units to 1, which is enormous. And it triggers on itself, because it's a unit, so you play this on turn 7. You then operate it for three credits, and then gain two to do something else. It's The idea behind it is very cool, but this is one of those things that is going to fold into the need for three op cost to have lots and lots of credits available to... Is it going to end up being a win more card? Because... You have to be each to, to actually benefit from this, you have to have a boatload of credits that you're then going to use to roll ahead benefiting from. So you, you have to pay the toll to be able to do it. You can't gain the two credits unless you can pay the three credits, which in effect is spend three, gain two, which is perfectly viable when you've got three up cost units so the idea behind it makes sense again i don't know whether this is just going to end up being a very fiddly deck to pilot but also potentially quite a good one um i don't know until we see the full package but if you can get a decent ramp going on a three up cost deck it's pretty good and again it makes a decent target for the previous card because this this card itself, but the downside of course is then this doesn't trigger to get the credit benefit, which is a ganty synergy Again, is this going to be too janky? We'll have to wait and see or is it just going to be the new thing? Okay, so we have a Japan card and we have an elite card. This is the type 4 Cheeto Now the Cheeto is Going to be noteworthy because it's an elite um, it's also noteworthy because it's going to be just interesting to read. So, the Cheeto is, as advertised, a, a, a big Japan unit, but this isn't one of those with a big downside. So, what's the deal with Cheeto? Cheeto has smokescreen, which is something that we, we are seeing more of and that we've seen over the past some more smoke green stuff slipping into Japan so that is a synergy that is not minor it has shock um, which as explained back that way um, like that way in fact and go back that way rewind um, uh, up, up the top I talk about the, the shock keyword and the fact that what this means is that the shock is a keyword that triggers the first time Note, the first time, not the first time every turn or the first time every activation. The first time in the battle that a unit attacks, shock triggers. For that attack, the target doesn't get to retaliate. There's no return damage. So this is a, a big swing to do damage. It's an even bigger swing to do damage with shock because what Cheeto says is that your units have plus two attack while they have shock. Now that's huge because obviously that makes this six. This is a six five while it has shock. Not that the five matters because while it has shock, it just deletes anything it swings against if it's got less than six health six or less health huge huge thing uh could be very very potent however 
Of course, it doesn't have blitz, it, it doesn't, it has a two op cost. So, it, but it is buffing your other shock units. So, if you have small shock units, then you can get some big punch for trading out of them, which is again part of the thematics above. Right, another Japan card, and fitting the theme at the minute, we get an order. This is Defeat in Detail, and, and this one gets the, the interesting note that it's already spawned, uh, as of the time of my recording this, it, its own article in, like, thread in suggestions on the main Discord. Defeat in Detail is a one-cost order. It's a special, um, so you can run two. And it says, your units get plus one, plus one, or when it damages, or, uh, your units get, or it should be your units gain, but your unit, your units get gets plus one plus one when it damages the enemy HQ. Obviously, this could be huge. This could be immense in a nation that already plays very aggro. It could also be a complete waste of time and energy because it could do nothing, and that is the thing about this, it's very RNG. Um, it's either going to be game winning or totally pointless, and it's really not likely to be anything in between. Because if it gets rolling, it's insane. Especially if you can get it on anything with Fury. But honestly, even if you can get it on a Type 94 early, which now gets plus two plus one when it damages the enemy HQ because it gets its own effect. Or if you could get two of these down, it would get plus three plus two whenever it has. You can see how this could spiral. This could snowball so hard it's terrifying, but it could also just break and do nothing because it requires you to be able to damage the enemy HQ. In particular, this could be devastating in support for support line aggro decks using air or artillery. Because they can just target. Bombers and artillery can just target the enemy HQ and keep growing and growing and growing. This has the potential to be a truly, truly insane card, and I'm not quite sure that I think printing it is a good idea. We shall see, but this thing is likely to prove very controversial, because it has the potential to be insanely strong. Just bare thoughts, and obviously, you know, we'll see how it comes out. Testing is testing, I'm sure it's happened, but honestly, I look at this and raise my eyebrow because there are a number of ways that this card could be utterly devastating, and it, it just becomes a must answer immediately, must find a way to clear every unit that's been affected by this. Um, because they're just rolling death. Right? That's it. That, that Those were all the cards. That's what we've seen in my opinions on it. Obviously, exciting new mechanic that I think is kind of cool and interesting and hopefully will work out really well in the form of Shock. We've seen some interesting new cards, some of which I think could be incredibly powerful, some of which I think could be incredibly situational. I am, of course, going to keep on top of content for the new expansion, so there'll be more coming from me in discussion. If you want to talk more about this stuff, you can come join me on my Discord, the link's down below. Just click the join link, come join the Discord, we've got some great people there. Reach out to me on social media, obviously comment down below, give your opinions and thoughts, and keep your eyes open for myself and other community content creators bringing more information on this stuff as we see it. It's definitely exciting times. I am looking forward to Blood and Iron. I think it's definitely going to be a shake-up. Uh, I'm very excited to see about rotation and return cards and balance patch changes, because I think they're going to be a huge part of the expansion at the moment as well. As always, uh, thanks for being here. Again, like, subscribe. If you feel that this has value to you and you'd like to see more of this content and, and make it easier for me to be able to afford to keep making content like this, please consider hitting the link down below and dropping me a donation. Even if it's just a little bit here and there, you'd be surprised how much every little really does matter. Check me out on Twitch. Catch me later. In the meantime, as always, be well, be safe and be good human beings, and I'll catch you next time.